Um, okay, uh, like Graham, I kind of want to retitle mine. Um, it's more about, I'm not a UX expert at all, um, but I do have some experience in the last few years in changing what we're doing based on student feedback. Um, so I guess a more accurate title would be uh, based on student feedback, improving the user experience for students and using videos in Moodle, but I guess in higher education in general, actually. Um, I work for King's College London, and a bit of background, I started there in 2015, and I was brought in to work on the redesign of the medical curriculum, which started in the 2016-2017 year. Um, and one of the major things that they changed was they moved students from starting their placement within an NHS hospital from year three to year two, which meant that all of a sudden um, they had to deliver a lot of uh, content within year one before students started placement in year two. So there was a huge push to have content online. Uh, limitations, probably a lot of you aren't new to these, but we had time and scale were a problem, so we had a very short period of time to create a lot of content. Um, digital literacy of the staff, many had no experience with online learning, um, and there were limitations on the technology. So we were moving to Moodle for the first time, um, and we had no video streaming solution at all. So uh, the solution that a lot of the staff went with were 45 minute narrated PowerPoints. Um, and this was because uh, all of these online lessons were timetabled and students were given an hour to complete them. So staff were told they had an hour of content they had to create. So this is what they created. So we then tried to infuse as much online pedagogy in them as possible. So we chunked them, we added titles to create signposting, uh, we put knowledge checks in between them to create some interaction and we presented them in an online way. So this is using the lesson uh, activity within Moodle. So you've got the chapter titles on the left and then we were using uh, iframes to embed the videos. Uh, and then in January 2017, uh, after the uh, first year had been going for about five months, I had a baby. <laughs> so I then took 12 months off of maternity leave and left my maternity cover to deal with most of the online lessons and all of the um, issues that, that cropped up in the first year. So while I was on leave, this happened. The videos went back to being uninterrupted 45 minute presentations. And this was in response to very strong student feedback. And they didn't like the display because it didn't show the lesson duration. So they were unable to pace themselves during that one hour that they were timetabled. So students were saying it was taking them two, three hours to get through something that should take them an hour. Um, and they wanted the videos to have the same interface features that they were having at lecture capture. So students loved lecture capture, absolutely. Medical students loved lecture capture. Um, but they didn't like these online lessons. Um, two of the features in particular that kept cropping up that they wanted was to control the speed and to view them full screen. Um, which is interesting, because I did a survey on user satisfaction quite recently last year and asked them how dissatisfied they were in controlling the speed of their lesson. Uh, this is for online lessons, not for lecture capture. And only a third of them were dissatisfied or very dissatisfied with controlling the speed. So actually not that many, I would say not that many, would be really dissatisfied. Um, in the same survey, I asked them how they, uh, what was their usual viewing speed of lecture capture, and almost two thirds of them watch it fast or really fast. <laughs> so I don't know if anyone's watched a lecture capture at double speed, but it's it's doable. So you can understand why students would would prefer to control the speed, particularly when they've given an hour to do something uh, that takes them 40 will take them 45 minutes. The other thing that I wanted to look at was how often they paused. And actually, over 60% of students reported that they paused frequently. So when they start something that's 45 minutes long within an hour long time slot, it does take them two hours. And medical students seem to be a unique breed of student that likes to transcribe everything. So they will take three hours to transcribe everything in the lesson. So I don't think we took that into account when we timetabled them for only an hour. Um, another thing that happened while I was on maternity leave was uh, Kaltura was adopted. So I got an email asking who wants to be a Kaltura super user. So even while I was on maternity leave, I said, yes! <laughs> um, I was very excited to have a um, video streaming server. So this is how the lessons look now. So Kaltura has a load of wonderful features. 
um, chapters which is brilliant, so where we can put the pedagogy back into it, we can put the signposting back into it. Um, but the simple things like being able to control speed, being um, able to view the duration is really important. Um, closed captions too, they really want closed captions, so we can include them in Kaltura. So in conclusion, I want to say that um, there's just a need for consistency across the video, the different video displays. Um, and it's also important to check back in on students. So, you know, we're not perfect at it, but we're trying to improve it. Um, so checking uh, the viewing settings, I'm curious to see how many are viewing them with closed captions on, um, how many of them are viewing them with full screen, uh, how they're revising, um, and also how they're taking notes. So the more videos that we put online, if they're using their computers to take notes, how are they taking notes while viewing those videos? Um, so yeah, that's, that's it. I think I'm ahead of time as well. So that's good.